Hi, I'm Wes Leonardo. I'm a senior Flex developer here at Ribbit. And in this series, we're going to cover how to code a phone using the Ribbit technology and Flex. In the first chapter, we're going to get the Flex project started. Second, we're going to design the phone in Flex Builder. Third, we're going to wire the phone to the Ribbit platform. And fourth, we're going to add a skin and add some sounds to the application. Well, here in chapter three, we're going to wire up our phone using the Ribbit technology. We're going to be using Ribbit's methods and events to make all of this happen. Uh, we're going to be using some methods like make a call and some really cool events like incoming call where the Flex application really just needs to sit there and listen to this being served up by the Ribbit server. First thing that we actually need to do is do a login to our Ribbit service. So. From our Ribbit request, we have an ID of request. Now we can make that call by calling request.login and we need to pass in a username and a password, which I have set somewhere else. We'll pass in later on a dev ID and an application ID. Now we'll call this the first login function once the application has been created. And we'll call this from the application tag in creation complete. Once we actually started our, our login to the Ribbit service, we'll actually get an event back from Ribbit called logging in. Now down below, I have set a text area down there called user status to actually just display logging in so we can visually give information back to our users that actually something is happening. Once we fully have logged in, Ribbit will actually serve back a Ribbit server connected event back to us. Once it's actually back to us, we'll actually call handle server connected function. Now our handle server connected function will actually go ahead and display that user status text as logged in. We actually have disabled the keypad so you can't use it until you've actually logged in and the phone number text area you are not able to actually enter anything into there once you've actually logged in. So we'll set both of those to true so you can actually use it once you've logged in. And down below here, you can see that on our phone number, we've actually set enabled. Let's change that to false. And our keypad, we will also set that to false. So that it's not enabled once uh, until we've actually logged in. Let's go ahead and see how that works. We'll build the project. And here you can actually see that everything was disabled and down below you could see logging in and then logged in. So now we're actually able to move on and to make a call or to answer a call. So once we have our login completed, and earlier we've actually connected our keypad with our text area, so now let's go ahead and make a call. Now, from a button, you can easily just call a make call function on a click event. Now, from here, what we're actually going to do is to take the number that's actually in the text area, phone number dot text, and we are going to go ahead and first make sure that the length of it is 10 or the length of it is 11. And if it's not, then we're going to say it's not a valid phone number. But if it is, we can go ahead and make a call. And we do this by calling request. We call our ribbit request object and just go ahead and say make call and pass in the phone number itself. Now up above in our ribbit request, we'll actually at first get an event back once we started to make this connection. First, we'll actually get a call ringing and we can handle that in a call ringing function. We can do many different things um, depending on what event is actually fired back to us. Next, once the actual phone call has been connected, we will get a call connected event that comes back to us and we'll handle everything down there in our handle call connect. Now down below in our function handle call connect, 
we're going to go ahead and set a new active call. Now we've incorporated a call object and we're going to go ahead and, and set the active call to an incoming call. That incoming call is also a new call object. We've also added a text area that you'll be able to visually see that we have been connected to a call. And so we'll call this text area call status and we'll set the text area to just say call connected. We're also going to go ahead and set another variable saying in call is true. This will happen later on. We'll get into some DTMF functions and we'll need the in call um, variable for that. So now we're connected and now we've been talking for a little while and we want to go ahead and disconnect from our call. This will handle, this will be handled with two events, one called call hung up and we'll handle that with the handle call hung up function. And the final event that will get fired back to us is called call disconnected. And we'll handle that with a handle call disconnected function. Let's take a look at these two functions down below. Now in the handle call hung up, we're going to go ahead and take the active call and assign a new call object to it. And we're going to set the call status dot text to call hung up. And remember our variable of in call, we're going to go ahead and set that to false. In our handle disconnected, we'll go ahead and reset the active call so that we can go ahead and dial a new call or answer a new call once it comes in. We'll set the call status dot text to call ended. And again, we'll just make sure that the in call equals false. We'll also go ahead and reset our keypad components and the phone number text area. We'll go ahead and empty that out so we can go ahead and add some new numbers, dial a new number or wait for an incoming phone call. All right, let's go ahead and build the project now. And the first thing you'll see is that the keypad is disabled and you'll see the logging in text below and now that we're logged in the keypad is actually enabled so let's go ahead and make a phone call and we're going to call the movie phone again and we'll click the green phone button which is actually going to call the make call function we have to allow our microphone Hello. up here you'll actually see that our text is now saying call connected like we had talked about before. So now we have a button enabled down here for our hang up. And this will go ahead and call our call hung up function. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it out went really quickly actually into the handle call disconnected and our call has ended and our phone area is ready for a new number. Next, we have one of the coolest features about Ribbit. Everything we've done before is actually initiating a request through the Ribbit request and getting something back. Where here, with an incoming call, we're actually just going to set up a listener and Ribbit will actually just push this towards us when an incoming call is actually coming in. So, well, all we need to do is set in our Ribbit request is an incoming call event. And when Ribbit actually pushes this to us, we're gonna go ahead and pass this along as into a function called handle incoming call. Let's go down to the function. Here, we're gonna go ahead and set incoming call as uh, a call object. We're gonna go ahead and display the incoming call um, in the phone number area. And in the call object, there's a caller and so we can go ahead and specify incoming call dot caller, which will display the incoming number. We'll also display in the call status an incoming call text. So let's go ahead and build this and demo how this works. So let the keypad come up. I have a testing phone here and it's actually dialing my ribbit number right now. In a second, in the text area, you'll actually see the number come up in the box. There it is.